then God wants to reward you. He will do it openly. So if you don't have anything in secret, there is nothing for him to unveil. For many years, I've been operating in the gift of the Spirit. I, could, I can see your problem. I can minister but in this cubicle. I didn't know it was training. It was training. It was training. It was training. Until I went to the United Kingdom in the city of Birmingham. And I saw a lady that had asthma. And I've been trained on how to deal with it. I told the congregation, wait. I have practical for you. I brought her. I said, for how long? I interviewed her. It was a wonderful moment. And then I removed the authority I had. The, the one I've been using here that it, when I, people get healed and people say, hmm. <laughs> you, you don't come again. You don't come again. <laughs> you don't come again. And I spoke to Asma. I said, Asma, hear me. In the name of Jesus, come out of the lady. She fell and began to cough. And I told the congregation, this is when you are, this is a sign that we spoke to us man in head you. This thing you are seeing now. They say, hey. I said, all right, leave her. She left instantly, she was healed. She followed me to the next meeting and I was talking about her testimony. And I now saw her in the condition. I called her. So tell us what. Oh. See, a, a young man from Africa. Everywhere we went, people followed us. The deaf could hear. The blind could see. In fact, I came for one meeting. And as I rebuked the demons, I saw old people were possessed. Old people were possessed. Old. An old woman. Old people had demons. So how long had the demon tabernacle there? My question to you today is, do you have any secret thing with God? If you don't have any secret thing to God, there will be nothing for him to display in the open. Everybody wants to rush into the open as if it is it's a human being that can give you visibility. If you have no backbone in the secret, God will have nothing to advertise. Oh, we moved to London and I was on the pulpit like this. And I saw a spirit come out of the water and put the hands on the waist like this. Ah, I said, oh, this is London. But I see a spirit <laughs> come out of the water. And I hope you know they won't believe me. When I released power, the people that manifested were not supposed to manifest. Not Guess where I practice all those ones? It's in the manger. Until I mastered it. I understood the texture of the anointing. I understood the texture of the voice of God. When God speaks to me. When he wakes me up in the morning and says, Beware. I have known it. People were amazed as we rebuked the water spirits. And those destinies were open. We saw organs healed. Bodily organs. Healed. A new season has opened for us. The Lord has promised that his power to heal will be so much among us. Hallelujah. We went to Ghana, to the northern part of Ghana. That's, that's a place where even and the average Ghana preacher is not likely to go to, to preach because of how entrenched it is in darkness. And when we came to the place, the Holy Ghost told me, salvation. What he was saying was, keep your message. These people need salvation. So when I gave an altar call for people to give their life to Christ, the response was massive. So massive. After we did that, then we started breaking yokes. 
demons were speaking through people and asking me what I was doing there. Demons were talking through people's vocal cords. Now, you see, if you don't have training with Jesus in the background, you enter into some fields, you will come down. These are the days where God will showcase the things that he has been incubating in the secret place, in the hideout. The Bible says our God is a God that sees in secret, but he rewards how openly. We're driving out of the arena of the meeting. Uh, on, was it Saturday night, Sunday night? And I saw a woman close to our car. The Holy Ghost said, call her. So I, called. I told the driver, wind down. And I, I put my hand like this. The moment she touched the hand. <laughs> I said, touch it. If you don't know how the Holy Ghost moves, if you do like this, <laughs> we are going to pray tonight. You will not waste your, your silent years. Your silent years are the strong years. Those are the moments where you cut covenant with God. And when you stand on the platform 10 years later, what will power that platform will be the covenants that you caught with God in the days of silence. Don't waste it. Demons and devils will visit you and say you are wasting. You are wasting time. You should have been on the front lines. Let me tell you something. I was just, this is my classmate in the university. We were discussing. One of our classmates, he just met him. The degree he went to get from this school and he added masters. He has not worked with it since that time. And we are above 40. We are he's still looking for a job. That's a man that missed his way. Do you understand what I'm talking about? He's still hunting for a job. If only he can secure the heart of God, maybe he will realize it was not the plan of God for him. Your secret is holds all the powers of the covenant that will trigger your destiny. It holds all, all the powers of the commitments from the mouth of God that will become a springboard in the days to come. Oh, the most intelligent student in our class that time is a lady, very sharp. I saw her many years ago. The race is not to the swift. And the battle is not too day strong. But this is a story I can tell you that is reliable. If you waste time with God, you will not waste time with men. Something is upon us and our land is about to experience a visitation. History will be made upon our borders like it was made in Jerusalem when Jesus walked among the sons of men. History will be made in our little city. And our little city will become a center of attraction. The eyes of many people will look into our little city because God is bringing a visitation into our land. He will set forth his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people. I will not miss that day. I will not be excluded from his agenda. My name will not be deleted. It will not be blotted out. Oh, I want to be in the forefront of what God will do. Just like Elijah, he molded an anointing so much that heaven now called the name of the anointing Elijah. Uh, they all the dimensions of the empowerment that the anointing brought, he maximized it to his fullness. So much so that he, the anointing man got a nomenclature. The anointing was called Elijah. And in the book of Malachi, the Bible says, Behold, I will send Elijah. He didn't say the spirit. He said, I will send what? Elijah.
light. He was talking about an anointing, but he, he said he called the anointing Elijah. I want to model the grace of God so powerfully that 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 God will have to say, I will send a Roman. <laughs> Come in here. Ah, ah. The time has come for God to have spokesmen for kings again, like he had in Idahosa. That people will invite to nations to give direction to kings, to senators, to people that craft laws, to provide platform for the things that God wants to do in their nations and in their territories. The season changes from our normal charismatic churches to something that is very apostolic, that has the authority to entrench God's purpose in a territory. Ooh, I, I want to model an anointing. I want to model the grace so powerfully and advertise his powers and his ability to establish the will and the purpose of God so that the anointing will be named by my name. Can we pray tonight? Don't waste your secret years. Don't waste your time in oblivion. Don't waste your time in the shadows. Because the Bible says that God, even though he sees in the secret, he will reward open. A time will come when you call out from your closet. Many nations will answer you. Many nations will answer you. Many kings will answer you. Many nobles will answer you because of the depth, the depth of your foundation, the depth of that which is coming through your life, the depth of that which flows in your ministry. set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people which shall be left from Assyria he set his hand before and he will set his hand again it means there is one from among us that will wear the cloak of Moses. One from among us that will wear the cloak of Elijah. A new civilization is about to be born. God is set again. Okay. 
Shabaya. Amebo Osika Maskila Batalia. Amebo Sele. Sele Mokela Mama. Amebele Babo Bosseto Tela Nia Mama Nahe. Ega Malapo. Oh, my God. 